Hey guys, it's Metagosis Perfect Nailless one more time, your favorite medical channel, resuming our discussion about our topics about pulmonary medicine. There is a playlist on my channel called Pulmonology, so please make sure to save this playlist and try to watch my videos in order. In the previous two videos, we talked about pulmonary function tests and the FEV1 to FVC ratio. It's more complicated than that and we will dive deeper in the future. Today we'll talk about pressure volume loops. Don't confuse pressure volume loops with flow volume loops. How do I know the difference? It's easy. Look at the axes. Here is pressure and here is volume. That's the first thing you do when you look at the graph. Second thing is you look at the slope. As you know, the slope of the straight line equals the change in the y-axis over the change on the x-axis which happens to be equal delta V over delta P. Do you know delta V over delta P equals compliance? So pressure volume loops are actually talking about the compliance. The slope of this straight line is the compliance. With that being said, now let's get started. So in my previous video called lung compliance, we actually talked about compliance, delta V over delta P. If you haven't already watched this video, it's very unlikely that you will understand this video to the fullest. So please go ahead to the, this previous video and watch lung compliance first. Again, it's in the same playlist called pulmonology. Compliance. Compliance is expansibility, is distensibility. I know that they are not actually the same if you are very sophisticated, but let's keep it simple, stupid. If you remember, compliance is delta V over delta P. Okay, what delta P are you talking about? What pressure are you talking about? The pressure that actually distends the lung, also known as transmural pressure. Okay, we get it. Transmural pressure is intraalveolar pressure minus intrapleural pressure. And if you remember, transmural pressure was equal to the intrapleural pressure in the amount, but it had the opposite charge. Transmural pressure is positive, trans or intrapleural pressure is negative. So if the intrapleural pressure was negative 5, the transmural pressure is going to be positive 5. Same amount, different charge. Compliance is opposite to the surface tension. Compliance is opposite to elasticity. Surface tension wants your lungs to collapse. Compliance wants your lungs to expand. Elasticity wants your lung to collapse. Compliance wants your lung to expand. Emphysema is like your very old socks with a lax rubber band. It's very easy to expand this stupid socks, but if you leave it alone, it's not gonna recoil. This stupid socks with useless rubber band is like emphysema with destroyed elastin fibers. You have increased compliance, which means it's easy to expand this lung, but decrease elastic recoil. On the other hand, pulmonary fibrosis is like a very strong socks with very strong rubber band, and when you put it in the laundry washing machine, it shrinks. Why? It shrinks because it has very strong fibers. When you have very strong fibers, you have increased recoil, but decreased compliance. It's very hard to expand the socks. So here is everything you need to know. All of the words in green mean the same thing, and all of the words in blue mean the opposite thing. Lung expansion is the same thing as compliance, as expansibility, same as distensibility, same as saying surfactant, same as saying elastase, example is emphysema. On the other hand, here the lung expands, here the lung collapses. Lung collapse is the same as recoil, which is opposite to compliance. Elasticity is the same as recoil, which is opposite to expansibility. Elastic recoil is opposite to distensibility. Surface tension is opposite to surfactant, that's why we call surfactant, which is anti-surface tension. Elastin is opposite to elastase. Elastase wants your lung to expand. Elastin wants your lung to collapse. Example here is fibrosis. So in cases of pulmonary fibrosis, your lungs tend to collapse. You have increased recoil, increased elasticity, increased elastic recoil, increased surface tension, and increased elastin. On the other hand, in cases of emphysema, it's the opposite. Your lungs tend to expand. It has greater compliance, greater expansibility, greater distensibility, greater not so much greater surfactant, but you get the idea, and greater elastase, which has destroyed the elastin fibers. That's how your lung expand. What causes the elastic recoil of the lung? If you leave your lung alone, they will collapse. They will recoil. Why? Number one, surface tension. Then, surface tension. 
than surface tension. Then the elasticity by elastin called surface tension is the most important force. Why surface tension? Because in the alveolus, you have an interaction between air and fluid, which is water vapor inside your alveoli. When air and fluid meet, there is surface tension that forms, thanks to the attraction between the molecules of the air-fluid interface. Let's replace this air with saline. Now we have a fluid-fluid interface. Will this create surface tension? And the answer is no. Oh, no, I'm not a physicist, so please don't be super sophisticated on me. I'm talking, if you fill it with saline, it's gonna have very low surface tension. It's, it's negligible. It's trivial. So forget it. So let's say that we have a lung which is filled with air and another lung which is filled with saline. Now let me ask you this. Which one is gonna have greater compliance? And the answer is the one that's filled with saline. Because the one which is filled with saline has greater compliance thanks to a lower surface tension. As you know, surface tension wants your lung to collapse. Okay, if you have less surface tension, by definition, you have increased compliance. Your lung that's filled with air has an air fluid interface, so it has surface tension that's greater than the other lung, and this will lead to decreased compliance. I hope this is clear. What causes the negative intrapleural pressure? Okay, any two surfaces that are moving away from each other create a negative pressure. That's it, in brief, it's so easy. The opposite is also true. Any two surfaces coming closer to each other create positive pressure, but we're talking about negative intrapleural pressure because the two surfaces are moving away from each other. Because the lungs tend to recoil, they move to the inside. Your chest wall tends to expand, it moves to the outside. Moving away from each other, they create a negative intrapleural pressure in between, which try to pull them back together and prevent them from moving apart. Okay, those are pressure volume loops, not flow volume loops. They are pressure volume loops. What is the slope? So first thing is delta V from the vertical axis over delta P from the horizontal axis in both curves, and this slope equals the compliance. I've told you before that if your lung is filled with saline, it has less surface tension and more compliance. Your normal lung has air fluid interface, therefore it has a surface tension, therefore it has a lower compliance. Okay, if compliance equals delta V over delta P, therefore the relation between compliance and pressure is inverse. The greater the pressure, the lower the compliance. Okay, so let's take like the same volume and see the effects on pressure. Here we needed like four, but here we needed less than four, let's say three. Okay, this is the saline filled lung and this is the normal lung. Which one needed a greater pressure? And the answer is the normal lung. Therefore, the normal lung has a lower compliance. There is another way to do it. Okay, the slope equals 10 theta. Theta is the angle here, and it's the angle here. Which angle is greater? And the answer is saline. This angle is it's closer to 90. Okay, this is smaller. If the angle is bigger, the slope is bigger, and the compliance is higher. So, quick review. Compliance, change in volume over change in pressure. The slope of the straight line is the compliance because it's delta V over delta P. A saline-filled lung has less recoil because it has less surface tension, therefore more compliance. That's why the slope is greater, that's why the angle is bigger. The intrapleural pressure needed to expand an air-filled lung is triple triple that which is needed to expand a saline filled lung. If the pressure is triple, the compliance is about one third. It's called common sense. And this is the huge effect of surface tension. That's why you are lucky if your lungs have surfactant. But in case of the sad case of immature babies who are born without surfactant, their lungs are at risk of recoiling. That's why we give them something to boost the surfactant, such as cortisol. What else? Thyroxin. What else? Prolactin. But, on the other hand, insulin will inhibit the production of surfactant. That's why you are at a greater risk of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome if your mommy is diabetic. 
please don't forget that in this video we are talking about pressure volume loop please don't confuse this with flow volume loops pressure volume loops are the same as compliance and this is not the same as the flow volume loop let's talk about inspiration expiration if you look at this and you remember what i've told you about the angle let's talk about the angle here this is the angle of the straight line this is the angle of inspiration and this is the angle of expiration which angle is bigger expiration which one has more compliance expiration let me explain during inspiration the alveoli expand so the surface tension particles become less concentrated instead of just like here is the normal alveolus they are close to each other but when you inspire they get away from each other surfactant is anti-surface tension this gives the surface tension an ability and a chance to increase when you increase surface tension you increase recoil but you decrease compliance that's why inspiration has a lower compliance than expiration expiration is the opposite the alveoli contract the surfactant become more concentrated surface tension decreases therefore recoil decreases but compliance increases what gives your lung the ability to recoil on its own number one surface tension which is by far the most important factor and then elasticity thanks to elastin and collagen and thanks to the anti-elastase which prevents us from being destroyed by the elastase okay so here's compliance here are the conditions that raise the compliance and here are the conditions that reduce the compliance first let's talk about compliance it's the change in volume over change in pressure so delta v over delta p it's the slope of the curve it's proportional to the angle it's the tan theta there are two things that cause your lung to recoil and collapse one surface tension two elasticity so in order for you to have greater compliance it's either due to decrease elasticity or due to decrease surface tension but for your lungs to have a reduced compliance and increased recoil you have to increase elasticity and increase surface tension so let's talk about increase in compliance due to decrease elasticity old age as you get older it's like your socks is getting older your pair of socks are now having a very lax rubber band therefore it's very easy to expand they have greater compliance but they, it's difficult to recoil they have decreased recoil or decreased elasticity also another example is emphysema which is very close to old age but this is like natural this is due to smoking increased compliance due to decreased surface tension a saline filled lung which is impossible for us to do it for you it's just a theoretical thing that you do in the lab for your for those sophisticated scientists and of course expiration has a greater compliance conditions that decrease compliance which makes it harder for you to expand your lung first due to increased elasticity intrinsic lung disease such as fibrosis or extrinsic restrictive lung disease such as chest wall disease if you have kyphoscoliosis it's very hard for you to expand your lung makes perfect sense okay decreased compliance due to increased surface tension there is a very famous condition called neonatal respiratory distress syndrome causes premature babies in c-section because they are not exposed to stress because if you are born through vaginal normal delivery you are squeezed through the vaginal canal when your head is squeezed this is stress which stimulates the famous stress hormone called steroids when you have lots of steroids you will have lots of surfactant but if you have low steroids you have no surfactant and you are more liable to neonatal respiratory distress syndrome what else causes neonatal rds low steroids low thyroxine low prolactin because those three stimulate surfactant production if you don't have them you don't have a surfactant you're more likely to get neonatal distress syndrome high insulin because insulin inhibits the surfactant if you have lots of insulin you have no surfactant you have increased surface tension you have decreased compliance work of breathing if you remember physics work equals force times distance or w equals fd if you are super sophisticated w equals f times d times cosine theta and since we are talking about flat surface theta here is zero and cosine zero is one when you multiply anything by one you can just remove it and put it simply w equals fd since inspiration is an active process it needs muscle if it needs muscle it's gonna have it's gonna need a greater force if the force is higher the work is higher so for a normal person the work of breathing is the same as work of inspiration how about work of expiration expiration is a passive process 
But if you have an obstructive lung disease and you cannot get the air out, you need abdominal muscles. You need accessory muscles of expiration during expiration. This is going to lead to force and it's going to lead to work. So we have work and inspiration and work of expiration. Of course, this is abnormal. That's why it's an obstructive lung disease. So in obstructive lung disease, you have increased your work of breathing. That's why you have respiratory fatigue. That's why you can show signs of intercostal retractions. So if you look at the patient's ribs, like the chest wall, the skin in between the ribs is moving inwards on its inspiration and expiration. <laughs> That's the blue bloater. As you know, I'm spitting wisdom all over the place. The negative intrapleural pressure is due to the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the chest wall, which wants to expand, and the lungs, which want to recoil, creating a negative pressure in between, which prevents them from moving apart. Next, the chest wall is confining the lung, and the lung is confining the chest wall, because if you leave it to your lung to have it its way, it's gonna recoil. The chest wall is preventing that. If you leave it to the stupid chest wall alone, it's gonna expand into oblivion and jump out of your thorax. Your lungs prevent that. And also, this is thanks to that negative intrapleural pressure. Okay, that's interesting. Again, pressure here, volume here, so the slope is the freaking compliance. We get it. This curve is the same. Instead of pleural pressure, put transpulmonary pressure and just, instead of negative, make it positive. Piece of cake. The slope of any of these curves equal compliance. So let's see which one has the greatest compliance. Let's take a common pressure and go upward. So the lung only has the lowest compliance. Then lung plus chest wall is the in between and the chest wall has the greatest compliance if it's alone because i've told you before that if you leave it to the chest wall it's gonna expand into oblivion translation it has the greatest compliance if you leave it to the lung alone it's gonna contract and recoil until it collapses that's why it has the lesser compliance or the least compliance and if you combine the lung and chest wall together, like normal human beings, it's going to be in between. Because if you remember my first word of wisdom, the dynamic harmonious antagonism is between what? The chest wall which wants to expand and the lungs which tend to recoil. Now let me tell you what's going to happen if we removed a lung called pneumonectomy. The chest wall initially will expand because of the dynamic harmonious antagonism. Now there is no lung, the chest wall is free to expand. And then this is going to increase the volume of the chest wall. According to Boyle's law, the relation between the volume and pressure is inverse. Therefore, when you increase the volume of the chest wall, you decrease the pressure of the chest wall, creating more negative intrathoracic pressure. Negative pressure pulls the diaphragm upwards and pulls the trachea towards the side of the pneumonectomy and eventually this is gonna pull water into the post pneumonectomy space leading to a pacification on the x-ray so let's say that we had a patient with two lungs in the beginning then we removed one lung he is just having this left lung right now the right lung is gone as the chest wall expands volume increases pressure decreases creating a negative pressure pulls the diaphragm up pulls the mediastinum towards the side of the pneumonectomy and eventually it's going to pull water in. That's how you end up with a pacification on x-ray on the right side, on the same side of the pneumonectomy. This was the story of the pressure volume loop. Please don't confuse it with the flow volume loop. In the next video, we'll talk about diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide, also known as DLCO. Let's be honest, you're struggling to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph, Strept, E. coli, Klebsiella. Check out this website called Picmonic. They have animated mnemonics and pictures for medical students. Please check the link in the description below. They are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have 100 cases there. And you can support this channel. Please do it. Even one dollar helps me produce more videos in the future and I'll send you my organized notes. They are organized in Dropbox folders that you can just download, including the notes of my pulmonology playlist. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.